Chicken Nazet. Hello and welcome to this hour on UNT TV. Today is Thursday, 24th of August, 2023, and it's equivalent to 8th of Safar 1445 after Hijra. The headlines Alert 6.9 billion era fraud, MFL explores plea bargain deal. Gunmen abducted 3,620 demanded 5 billion era in one year, says report. DSS officer stops caretaker in ocean over electricity bill. And on the foreign scene, Wagner Group leader. Prigozhin killed in Moscow plane crash. And in sports, Jennifer Hammersers Union says unacceptable kiss should not go unpunished. And those were the headlines and for details and more of the stories, I am Rukayet Sani Ibrahim. Indications emerged yesterday that the embattled suspended governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, Mr. Godwin Mefele, may be exploring a plea bargain deal with federal government. This is even as he scheduled fresh arraignment before the High Court of the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, sitting in Maitama, was again stalled yesterday. Neither MFLA nor his co-defendant in the 20-count corruption charge the federal government entered before the court, Mrs. Saad Chiaro, were present for the proceeding. An official of the court who spoke to newsmen but pleaded not to be named said the case could not proceed as planned due to fresh developments in the matter. Meanwhile, one of the defense lawyers in the matter who dropped hints of the plea bargain to newsmen said the move to settle the case out of court was at the instance of the Edswell CBN burst. Between July 2022 and June 2023, 3,620 people were abducted in over 582 kidnapping incidents in the country. With a reported ransom demand of at least 5 billion naira and an actual ransom payment of over 302 million naira, a figure that could be higher due to under-reporting. An SB Morgan intelligence report released on August 23, 2023, entitled The Economies of Nigeria's Kidnap Industry, Follow the Money, disclosed these figures. The SB Morgan Intelligence Report delves into the harrowing statistics, motivations, and complexities of the growing epidemic. The report unveils a striking correlation between our struggling economy, rising inflation, and soaring unemployment rates and the exponential growth of the kidnap for ransom industry. When contacted, the first public relations officer and the director of defense information, CSP, Olumuyiwa Adejopi and Brigadier General Tukurukusau, respectively, did not respond to phone calls, SMS and WhatsApp messages by newsmen on Wednesday night. The Chief of Air Staff Air Marshal Hassan Abubakar on Tuesday in Patakot River State commiserated with the families of the deceased crew members of the ill-fated MI-17IE helicopter that crashed in Niger State in August 14, 2023. While condoling with the families, Air Marshal Abubakar said the loss was a major setback for the NAV, adding that it would take the service some time to get over. A statement by the Director of NAV Public Relations and Information stated that the CAS assured the families that the NAV will never abandon them but will always stand by them till the end. He also assured that the sacrifices of the fallen heroes could not be in vain and that the Nigerian Air Force could do everything possible to foster such occurrences in the future. The National Youth Service Corps NYC has said its Director General Brigadier General Yusha U. Ahmad is working with the Nigerian Police Force, the Department of State Services and the Military Brigade to secure the release of eight core members kidnapped in Zamfara State on Saturday. The NYC Director of Press and Public Relations, Eddie Megwa, made the development known on Wednesday in an interview with newsmen. It will be recorded that gunmen abducted eight members of the NYSC on a highway in Zamfara on Saturday. The core members were traveling inside an AKTC bus from Uyo, Akwaibom State, to Sokoto State and route to Zamfar State to take part in the mandatory national service. The Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, FCT Nyesam Wike, says he did not buy a 300 million Naira armored Lexus car on assumption of office. Wike, who spoke on Wednesday after his tour of the Abuja Light Rail, denied social media reports and challenged reporters to touch his car to confirm whether it was a bulletproof car or not. 
the ex-governor of River State said he has not had a meeting with officials of the FCT administration, let alone approve a car for himself. A senior advocate of Nigeria, San Kemi Penhero, has urged Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Latik Fagbaimi San, to effect the immediate release of the former chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Abdul Rashid Bawa. Penhero noted that Bawa's continued detention by the Department of State Services, DSS, for 70 days as of Wednesday, without any known charge, was unconstitutional and unlawful. He warned that by holding Bawa, the government rigs sending the wrong signal to the international community concerning human rights violations in Nigeria. He noted that his present concern is that the continued detention may also be construed as violating Section 35, Subsection 4 and 5 of the Constitution as amended. According to him, the section guarantees the right of every person where arrested or detained to be charged before a competent court of law within a reasonable time. There was panic in Tinimuola area of Oshogwa, the capital of Oshin State, on Wednesday when a tenant reported to be an officer of the Directorate of State Services, DSS, had allegedly stabbed his caretaker, Omosala Oladeli, after an argument over payment of an electricity bill. The crisis ensued on Tuesday night when fellow neighbors reported the DSS officer, who was simply identified as Tifase, to the caretaker about his nonchalant attitude to bills in the house. According to eyewitnesses who spoke with newsmen, the DSS officer stopped the caretaker with a dagger after he asked him about payment of an electricity bill. Confirming the incident, the Oshun State Commissioner for Pol of Police, Kehinde Long, spoke with newsmen, said that he was yet to be brief about the incident as at the time of filing this report. The National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, said yesterday that it has launched a manhunt for an alleged Lagos-based notorious drug dealer, Soumi Ayodeji Kayode, who is now on the run after ramming his car at an NDLEA officer in his bid to escape arrest when operatives were on a search of his house last weekend. Anti-narcotics officer of the agency last Friday stormed the residence of the wanted drug dealer at 2-3 Adetola Ayeni close, Leki in Lagos, for a search and possible arrest following credible intelligence that he was dealing in illicit drugs in his house. Following the unpleasant development, NDLEA boss Brigadier General Buba Marwa retired, has directed the deployment of appropriate operational assets of the agencies to smoke out the unwanted suspect from his hiding. He also approved adequate medical care for the injured officer so that he can get back on his feet as soon as possible. On the foreign scene, the Wagner Group chief, Yafjeni Prigozin, has been killed in a plane crash. The private jet crash killing about 10 people on board. Russian emergency services have said that the bodies of all 10 passengers on the Embraer Legacy jet have now been recovered. According to the authority, those on board include Wagner chief Yevgeny Prigozhin and his second in command, Dmitry Yuklev, the man who gave the mercenary group its name. Recently, Prigozhin had attempted a coup on Putin. Prigozhin led a failed mutiny against the Russian armed forces in June. Putin has described Prigozhin as a traitor. And in sports, a union representing spin forward Jennifer Hamorso, who was kissed on the lips by Spanish Football Federation President Luis Rubiales says the incident should not go unpunished. Rubiales has apologized for the incident which followed Spain's Women's World Cup final win on Sunday. The incident has drawn international criticism with government ministers demanding Rubiales' resignation. On Monday, Rubiales said in a video statement that he was completely wrong. Spain's Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez has said Rubiales' actions were an unacceptable gesture and that his apology was not enough while Spain's second deputy prime minister, Yolanda Dias, called for his resignation. And with the sport news, we've come to the end of our bulletin for today. You can follow us on our social media handles at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at 20 Radio FM TV. You can also watch us live on the satellite decoder, but our site, which has been watched in about 38 countries of the world free. You can also stream us and watch us live on our YouTube channel at Unity FM TV. I am Rukayet Sani Ibrahim. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of our programs. Do have yourself a lovely day.